here, Mike. You're in the uh, you're, you're you're in the Mormons. You're you're growing up in it, and obviously you're going through your teen years and twenties and real development years. Uh, mm. uh, certainly at that you know at, at that stage, mm. um, and as you say, very happy in it uh, from yeah. that point of view. Yes, uh, because you had nothing to compare it with. Yeah. Um, what began? your doubts your questions what 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 stopped you from coming through you know from from, from what 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 began that move to to bring you out of mormonism well it <laughs> i was happy there because um what i had satisfied me and because the people are great people and because if you had to have a religion and you couldn't be a Christian, that would be a great religion to have anyway. Yeah. Okay. But I, I, I think what, what really got us to think about um, questioning it uh, was that it simply didn't work. You know, we left the Mormon church not because, not because we quarreled with anybody or anyone was unkind to us or we were treated badly. We were treated very well. Yeah. But we began to question, well, if this is how it's meant to be, why does it not work for us? Why do we feel that after all these years, we don't seem to be getting anywhere? And why is it that so many Mormons that we knew probably felt the same way? When you say weren't getting anywhere, do you mean spiritually in your experience? Or, or yes, yes, spiritually, yeah. and, and, and just feeling you're making progress. I mean, Mormonism is, is, is um, a can-do religion. It, it's, it's all about... Uh, Get a, getting up on your hind legs and doing it for God, you know? And because of the Mormon attitude towards sin and towards repentance and forgiveness, uh, you always seem to be back on square one. You, you know, you, you'd, you'd wake up in the morning, you'd have a pretty good day, but there was always something. Christians know how this is. There's not a day goes by when you don't have to get on your knees and say, Lord, forgive me. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And it's like that when, when you're a Mormon. But when you're a Mormon, you're supposed to be doing this thing they called progressing. Right. And you look at yourself and you see your friends and nobody seems to be progressing that much. You know, and you see people doubling and redoubling their efforts and lengthening their strides and all the all the phrases come into it. But at the end of the day, how do you know that you're getting on what you're standing before God today? Is it better than yesterday? Is it worse than yeah. yesterday? You don't know. Right. I mean, there's this wonderful little couplet isn't there in, in, in Mormonism, it goes something like, you know, as, as God uh, was, so, man, no, as, as man is, so God was, and as God, that's as, the one. In other words, man. Yeah, I man, got it, I got it. Man, man, <laughs> I knew it there somewhere, is it, is it, in that? Is it there somewhere? But what it's actually saying is that God was once a man, and man could become God. Yes. Now, so in your progressing, are you talking about not just progressing in this life, but did you have that desire to progress to become a god as well was that part of that progression well yes i mean that's 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 one of the keys to it you see i mean the couplet is as man is god once was thank you <laughs> as god is man may become that's the one <laughs> and it's uh, a moment will tell you well that's not official doctrine uh, yeah. somebody said it but it does represent official doctrine uh, and the idea is that man was uh, god was once a man and lived on an earth and he progressed to be God. In a speech called the King Follett Discourse, Joseph Smith actually said this. If right. I could draw the veil back today and you could see God as he is, you would see that he is a man. Wow. And he was not always God. And, that he, and I will tell you now how he came to be God wow. by a process yeah. of obedience. And then he went on to say, and you must learn to become gods yourself. Mm. And that's what Mormonism has always taught. Now, you know, you want to do that, not because of any big headed sense of, you know, I'm going to be a God, you know, <laughs> then I'm going to throw some thunderbolts around. <laughs> but no, yeah. it's it's that that's what your religion is and that's what you believe and that's what your God wants you to do. And so you strive to do right. that. But of course, you begin to realize that there are an awful lot of people around you who, especially as they get older, have given up on that thought. And more and more you hear people say things like, well, you know, um, I may not get into the celestial kingdom, right? 
But you know, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. And you hear this time and again, and then you begin to realize that an awful lot of people have lost this ambition, which is supposed to be the aim of every Mormon. So you, you mentioned this celestial kingdom. Now, is that, is that the numero uno sort of thing? I mean, how many kingdoms are there? And, you know, and if they didn't get into the top one, where did they go? Well, in Mormonism, there are what they call three degrees of glory. And uh, in the first, the, the, the highest degree, it's, it's the celestial kingdom. This is where God lives. And even within the celestial kingdom, there are three degrees. Mm -hmm. And if you go, uh, if, you, if you're a faithful Mormon all your life and you keep all the commandments and do everything that's requested of you, then you will progress to become a God. You will go to the celestial kingdom. If you don't make it there, you'll go to one of the other two lower kingdoms, which have different degrees of glory. There's the terrestrial and the telestial, mm -hmm. okay? And, and so what you're saying is that you knew a number of older Mormons or people that have been in the Mormon church quite a while that had given up trying to get to the best and were going to settle because the second and third weren't going to be that bad. So they would settle for one of those. You see that they'd come across the big problem that every Christian is so familiar with. I'm a sinner. I need a savior. Right. I am dead in my sins. I need grace in my life. I need to turn to the Lord and say, Lord, I can't do it. Right. And of course, Mormonism doesn't have that message. Yeah. Mormonism yeah. has the message that, well, Jesus died for your sins, so you get a clean slate. So you get onto a footing where you can start again, but still by your own efforts, you strive to go on right. to become a God. Got another caller on the night. You, you can see Mike's a preacher. We're, we're trying to get him for a pre- we, we, He's great when he gets going. But uh, well, we, we have a caller on the line. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm okay. Great. Um, I'm just listening to your program regarding um, God being a man. Yes. Um, I'm a bit confused when you said God <laughs> was a man and became God. I mean, wasn't he God before he became man? <laughs> You, we, we, you do appreciate we're talking about Mormonism and not the Christian doctrine, don't you, first of all? Yes. Yeah, but, um, no, that's fine. I, I, I just wanted to make that clear. Because <laughs> we'll I've been attacked before when I've, we've been sharing things that a, a different group believes because they think, you know, we're talking about the Christian doctrine. Now, I'm going to get Mike to explain that to you a little more. Uh, the doctrine of Mormonism that God was once a man. If God was once a man. Where did that man come from that became God? And was there another God before that one that became? Mm. Mike, you well, answer, you know, please. <laughs> you're, you're perfectly right. In, in Christianity, God is God. He's always been God. He's been God from eternity. He will be God to eternity. That's the wonderful thing about God. He doesn't change. You can rely on him. You know who you're dealing with. What he was yesterday, he is today. And what he is today, he will be tomorrow. Now, in Mormonism, they have this thing called the plan of salvation. And in the plan of salvation, men become gods. So God was once a man who lived on a planet on earth. And he, in turn, worshipped and obeyed his God. Now, that God, once upon a time, was a man who lived on a planet, <laughs> on an earth, and obeyed and worshipped his God. It's what they call an infinite regression. <laughs> yeah. and the trouble with an infinite regression is that <laughs> it just, it, it's, like, it's like saying that the world is on the back of a turtle, that's on the back of a turtle, that's on the back of a turtle. Well, how many turtles is it? Is it turtles <laughs> all the way? And, and it doesn't work that way. You, you then eventually find, when you think about it, that you, you end up not having a first cause. God is infinite. God is eternal. He is the first cause of all created things. But in Mormonism, you don't have a first cause. In fact, you could almost say Mormons are atheists because they don't have a God. 